people come into our lives they cross our paths and some leave our lives every person we meet there is some reason why their trajectory of life crosses mine and why others leave our lives it is important to know what am I supposed to learn from these encounters and experiences? The Prophet ﷺ said in a beautiful hadith, Al-arwah junudun mujannada Fama ta'arafa minha talafa wa ma tanakara minha talaf Souls are like troops gathered together. And those who were familiar with each other in heaven would have affinity with one another in this life. Those among them who opposed each other in heaven would also be divergent in this life. We learn from this beautiful hadith of Rasulullah that souls are like armies that people recognize each other from a previous realm. The hadith explains the phenomenon that you may have just met a person. You may not have known them for long, yet you feel an immediate connection with them. You feel, I have known him his entire life. I personally have met people who I may not ever meet again, not in this life at least. But I still remember how much I learned from them and I would like to talk about three of those people today the first is this young boy in a juvenile detention facility that I used to go for da'wah more than 20 years ago I and another friend of mine used to go there on Sundays when we were off work to meet with Muslim youth and others who were new to Islam in that facility one time I was talking to them about increasing their worship in the month of Ramadan and reciting the Quran. And I remember this young boy who had special needs and his IQ uh, was below average saying, I cannot remember much and I'm not a good reader. It is difficult for me to read. Tell me something that is easy for me to do on Laylatul Qadr so I can gain more rewards. I was stumped, so I thought for a moment. And eventually I told him to recite Surah Al-Ikhlas three times every night of the month of Ramadan, in particular the last ten nights, because of the great reward that this Surah entails. And it would also help him in memorizing it, because it's a short Surah, and it would also help him in praying his regular daily prayers as well. And he had a mushaf which had transliteration, that is the Arabic words written in English. So he was able to do so easily. I thought for a moment and told, uh, thought to myself about how beautiful our deen is. One, I was amazed how keen and motivated this young man was, this young boy was. His limitations did not prevent him from seeking nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or asking questions about learning his deen. Two, what was more amazing is that our beautiful deen had a solution for someone with his needs. His request moved me so much and so deeply that I still remember him till today. The lesson is that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us tawfiq, and that's the key. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us tawfiq, no matter what our limitations are, no matter what situation we are in, if Allah gives me tawfiq, I can worship Him. I can come close to Him. His doors are always open to everyone, no matter how broken or challenged a person might be. 
The second person I remember is a young Algerian brother who used to pray with us in Arlington, in Texas. He was tall, he was good mannered, very laid back personality. But the most amazing thing about him was his constant smile. All of a sudden, for several weeks, we did not see him in the masjid. He went missing. But we thought maybe he's traveling, or maybe he got busy with something. Then one day, we see that he's walking into the masjid. And I noticed, and I noticed that something was different. He was missing his entire leg, his whole leg. He was walking on crutches. But the thing which I remember that day when I saw him is that he was still smiling. He had that same smile, that same beautiful smile on his face. He was not married. He had lost his entire leg. Probably he won't marry, but he was smiling. This is a person who has been given the gift of sabr or patience. It reminded me of Asya, the woman who was put through trials. One of the worst situations you can imagine being in. She was not just in a bad relationship, she was married to Pharaoh, the Pharaoh, the worst human being to have lived ever. He tortured her, inflicted great pain on her. Most of us cannot even imagine what it means to go through that type of agony. Yet, in her situation, Allah gave her the ability to smile. While going through Pharaoh's torture, she asked Allah to show her. These were her last movements that Prophet ﷺ have told us in a confirmed hadith. That she asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show her her house in paradise, in Jannah. And she was able to smile in the midst of that pain. The lesson is though is that no matter what trial we are going through in life, if the help of Allah comes to us, any trial can become easy. We need not worry about whether a trial would afflict us, would come our way. Because it will. But what we need to worry about is if the aid of Allah will come. Because if it won't, sabr will not be there to withstand the trial. We go through our lives living in great comfort. This is the truth. We go through our lives living in great comfort without realizing the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we take simply for granted. For example, take swallowing the saliva as an example. Do you know that there are people who can choke on their own saliva because they cannot swallow it, because of a medical condition? I don't think any one of us even realizes that something so mundane is a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is swallowing my saliva for which I have to say next time Alhamdulillah I was able to swallow my own saliva and not choke on it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al latif He is subtle and His blessings are subtle and most times we do not even realize the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the beautiful, magnificent blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our lives. I'm grateful to have known that brother whose path crossed mine. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala build for him a palace in the highest part of Jannah. People like this brother are real superheroes who withstand such intense tests from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this life. And you don't just read about them in the books of history. But they are in our midst. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is their wali, their helper. And Allah is your helper. You can withstand anything. As our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, فَلَا تَكِلْنِي إِلَى نَفْسِي طَرْفَةَ عَيْنِ He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do not leave me to myself. Do not leave me, O Allah, to myself for blink of an eye. Because a person cannot survive if Allah leaves him for even the duration of the blink of an eye. The third story, the third person is of a sister. A distant relative of my father's who lives in Wisconsin. She was married to a handsome, good-looking attorney. Both moved to the United States for a better life. But what she did not know is that soon after moving over to America, her husband will be afflicted with a rare disease that will slowly degenerate every single moving muscle of his body. He felt sick. And it took a while for the doctors to figure out and to diagnose that he was suffering from Lou Gehrig's disease. Within months, he was bedridden. He was living in a small, and she was living in a small one-bedroom apartment caring for her husband who was slowly dying to the point that he could not move. Which meant that he could not go to the toilet himself. Which meant that at night he could not turn sides, he could not change his side while he, where he was laying down. Which meant he could not eat himself. But she took care of him. To her it was the least she could do for a husband she had loved her whole life. He deserved it. Here is the amazing part. That this extreme test brought her so close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Her whole life since the loss of her husband revolves around Allah and his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Other than her work, she works as a dental assistant just to survive. She's either learning her deen or teaching it to others. If you look at her, you will see that she is a woman at peace. There is light, there is noor due to inner peace that shines on her face. And it is the light of satisfaction, of contentment. The lesson is that the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on us is more than that of a husband, more than that of a wife, more than that of a father, and more than that of a mother. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْصُوهَا إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَغَفُورٌ رَّحِيمٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always showering his blessings upon us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given every single one of us so much. The question is how do we repay him? The irony is that Allah is not in need of us. Yet he gives us. We are in desperate need of him. Yet how do we repay? Learn to love Allah, not just to fear Him. Because remember Allah is a rahman Allah is Al-Wadud. And at the same time Allah is Dhumtiqam. Along with the consciousness, which we translate as a type of fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, teach the love of Allah to children. Let me illustrate this with a simple example. Say you give your child a gift. And you tell the child it's from your grandmom. The next day you do the exact same thing. You give your child a valuable gift, something they really like, they really appreciate. What happens after a while? Now even though the child might not have seen or met with the grandmother, he begins to love her. Attachment is naturally built. 
So always tell your children that everything that they have, always tell your children that everything that they have is from Allah and Allah loves you because you are a Muslim. You submit to Him. You pray to Him and you worship Him. I hope that if this love is there, no matter what path this child takes on as they grow up, that love will always be there. To summarize, sometimes you meet a Muslim who is such a blessing that you want to be a better person because of him or her. Aspire to be that person for those who are around you. Aspire to be that role model. Connect with people. Get close to them and build a true genuine human connection. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us a blessing for those around us. And may we see lessons that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us through the people who surround us. Mm -hmm.